Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we will discuss the last problem of today's weekly contest. I already recorded a video, a detailed video explaining how I approached the problem in the live contest and how one should approach it in live contest. And I also explained how we can uh, come up with uh, a recursive solution and then try to iterate over it to finally go on bottom of solution and optimize it. I also tried to explain when you should choose that route and what is the other routes possible. Okay, so this is a pretty detailed video and the length of the video becomes a bit longer. But yet I am sure if you watch this video, you will get to learn something new. So this video is for audiences which or who already know DP or who already know how DP works. They have a fair understanding of how to convert a top down DP into bottom up DP, but they still uh, have some difficulty understanding the solution of the problem. So this is for that uh, for, for those audiences. Yet you can watch this video to just get a glimpse of what is being discussed in this video. And if you like, if you like it, you can just check it out. Then check check this entire video out. Otherwise, this video should be fine. Okay. So I would be, I would not be discussing the entire approach. I will just be glossing over some of the things which I assume you know. In case you don't, again, I would encourage you to check that other video out. With that, let's get started. The problem states that you have you are given a string s, and you have to partition this into k non-intersecting substrings and each of these substrings should be at least this, man, this much length. Each of those substrings should start with a prime digit and should end with a non-prime digit. Prime digits are given as 2357. Okay. You can do this partition in a lot of different ways. So the problem is to determine how many number of partitions you can make which satisfies all these three criteria. For example, in this particular string, there are three possible ways in which you can do this partition. So the first in first partition, you can see it satisfies these two conditions. So first of all, there are three consecutive partitions. So sorry, there are three partitions. So the first condition is satisfied. Second, uh, they have at least length this. So they are all greater than or equals to length two. So this is also satisfied. And third, they all start with a prime digit. Prime digit is 2357, right? So they all start with a prime digit and they all end with a non-prime digit. So all the three conditions satisfied. So all there are only three such partitions. So that's where the answer is three. Okay. Now the most uh, intuitive way to think about it is uh, you are given a string. Now you have to make or you have to choose first partition. The first partition should satisfy these two criteria, right? So these two criteria should be satisfied. Now, if you think about it, the length should be at least min length. So it says min length is two. So what are your probable candidates for choosing this first partition? Probable candidates are this, 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 and so on, right? So these are the probable candidates. Now, among this, this condition should also be satisfied. So basically they should start with a prime digit. So we are already starting with a prime digit. That is, that is fine. But they should all end with a non prime digit. So if you think about it, the valid first partition can be either this or it can be this, right? Or it can be this as well. And similarly, this and this are also valid partitions. So these are the, these are different valid partitions that you can have or the valid first partition that you can have. Now, if you think, uh, let's talk about, let's take the first case. So this, this is the valid partition. Now, once you have identified the first partition, what you are, what you remain with, you have to find what is the number of partition or how many ways you can partition the remaining string into K minus one substrings, right? You partitioned, you, you already removed one substring, right? And now you have to find out how many number of ways are there to partition it into K minus one substring. So this is just a smaller problem, a smaller version of the original problem. In the original problem, we have greater string and the value of, and a greater number of value of K. But now we have said that, okay, we we've taken out one partition. So string is now reduced. 
and number of partitions that we have to make out from the string is also reduced it is now k okay so with this you can just write a recursive approach the recursive approach would look something like this you will say uh, you will say that uh, what is the number of ways to partition everything starting from this particular index into this many number of partitions so if uh, so this is the crux basically uh, you will try out every possible ending index right uh, for every possible ending index you will see what like this possible for every ending index you will check this condition because this condition should be satisfied right so you will check whether ending index is prime or not if it is prime you will just continue if it is not prime then it is a valid first partition so you have chosen one partition now you have to choose other partitions so basically you have figured out the first partition and now you have to choose the remaining partition from starting from this index right so that's what we have done we have just called f with the next index and number of partitions that we have to make now is one lesser okay so we will just uh, sum them all up and we will get the desired result for the current index okay so this is the solution now if you think about it the complexity is number of uh, you can memorize it and the complexity would be number of different states multiplied by n because in each in each state we are actually iterating over the all all the ending index right so num what how many di distinct value of index is possible n and how many distinct value of partitions are possible k right and this loop can go up to order n in worst case right so the complexity is order n square k which will not pass based on the given uh, constraint of n and k right so that's why we have to remove one of like uh, reduce the complexity so this n and k we can't reduce we have to somehow reduce this but in this current scenario we can't do that as well so i discussed about when like there are two paths from here one is to try some mathematical solution other is to uh, look at the bottom up approach the bottom up approach uh, because all the second the the, the second uh, second condition or the second parameter is equal in all the next uh, value of f we are calculating we can actually think of optimizing it via some operations if we go bottom up okay so now why we can't do it in top down i explained in that video uh, you can watch it out but for now you can just convert this to bottom up and you will just see uh, that much more clearly so what we have done we have just converted this exact same solution into a bottom-up solution uh, DPO like ways of index comma P denotes how many ways are there to partition uh, the string starting at index I and D into P number of partitions okay so we have like we have just done the exact same thing we iterated over every next index right and uh, starting from index up till this index next we will have first partition and what is the remaining like because in next is the ending index so we have to check whether this next is not prime or not uh, whether it, this in next is prime or not if it is not prime then only this is a valid ending index right this is similar to this condition so if it is not prime we will then just add the ways of next plus one to p minus one right so number of we we are saying that we got the first partition so we have to get now p minus 1 partition from the remaining string next plus 1 and this is already calculated because we are coming from back uh, from backward we are, we are coming from backwards so basically we started with n minus 1 so if we are at index i we are sure that everything from i plus 1 to n minus 1 is already calculated right so that's where uh, this just uh, simply adding this would work now if you look closely this thing is nothing but suffix sum over something right like suffix sum but like this is suffix sum if this condition was not there this is exactly suffix sum right uh, over all the next indexes but because this condition is there this is not exactly suffix sum this is uh, uh, a limited suffix sum or suffix sum with where this condition is satisfied right so that's where uh, what you will do like you can just I, I can just explain this quickly with a simple example so let's say this you can you have to calculate this value 
this is the value you are calculating, right? So this is just a suffix sum over this uh, range. Now why this range? We are assuming that min length is 2. So because min length is 2, we can't start from here. Okay, so we'll start from here. Now, this is a suffix sum, but suffix sum not across all the three. In this case, it is taking all the three, but you should only take those values for which so you are adding next plus one comma p minus one right so you should only take those values for which the previous index is not prime right so whether you take this value the uh, the answer would be answer would depend on what is the previous value previous value is four it is not prime so you will take this will you take this answer is no because the previous value is prime so you can you will not take this similarly if you think this with this you will take this and this as well because the previous value of this 5 is 8 so because it is not prime you will take this okay similarly let's talk about another example let's say uh, you have to find out this so what is this uh, this is just uh, the suffix sum over this sum of this right like uh, suffix sum over this so what exactly uh, what exactly is this values like if you sum them all up they will definitely be greater than 3 but it is 3 so we have applied the same thing you will take an index only when the previous value is not is is not prime so will you take this value the answer is no because previous value is 3 which is prime so you will not take this in the suffix sum Will you take this? Answer is yes because the previous value is 4. So you will take this. Will you take this? Answer is yes because previous value is 8, which is not prime. So that's how we are calculating suffix sum. We are still calculating suffix sum, but with a specific constraint that previous value should be not prime. If it is prime, uh, we are just considering that value or the contribution of that particular index as 0. So with this logic, you can simply build a suffix sum array while calculating the uh, values from backwards. And finally, you can replace this entire for loop with just the suffix sum value. Okay, so that's the entire solution. I have discussed this entire solution in detail in uh, another video, as I, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video. If you have any doubts or if you want to explain how I uh, reach here exactly, what is the thought process, everything is discussed in the detailed video. If you want a detail over any of these concepts here, I would encourage you to check that out. Okay, so I hope you enjoy the video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.